some of whom reigned during the Golden Age. Women in particular. You have a woman whose name is Heta Ferris. She is the great royal wife of Sneferu, who commissioned three massive pyramids, and the mother of Khufu. But in the Sixth Dynasty, at the end of the Sixth Dynasty, you have a woman known as Nitocris. And she's spoken of specifically by Herodotus as being a pharaoh and also the person who commissioned the third of the great pyramid projects at Giza. And she's called the loveliest and fairest woman of her time. The most renowned Egyptian women ruled during the Middle and New Kingdoms. A few were even as powerful as the great pharaohs themselves. Other women were content to exercise their influence behind the throne. Let us move ahead now to the Third Dynasty. By this time, Egypt was well on its way to becoming the extraordinary nation it was destined to be. Many of its achievements were staggering. For example, Imhotep, the brilliant philosopher, architect, and scientist, also became the true father of medicine. Through his influence, the Egyptians developed antiseptics, vaccinations and advanced surgical techniques and they found cures for numerous diseases in short the Egyptians laid the foundation for modern medical science scientific medicine begins in ancient Egypt that is to say if we look at the Edwin Smith surgical papyrus I call it the founding document of scientific medicine anywhere in the world from the point of view of the sciences that we call the uh, if we call the related disciplines of medical science that is anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology. Those were organized as coherent scientific disciplines first in ancient Egypt. The first medical schools were built and erected in ancient Egypt. The first organized system of instruction and of teaching were uh, first established in ancient Egypt. The first surgery, the first neurosurgery. The first investigations into cardiovascular physiology, all this began in the ancient kingdom of the Nile in the northeast uh, quadrant of Africa 6,000 years ago. In fact, so well known was ancient Egypt's primacy in the area of medical science that Hippocrates would have never had the audacity to have called himself the father of medicine because he knew better. He would have said, as Homer did, that in medicine, Egypt leaves the rest of the world behind. That was accepted as a matter of fact uh, in the ancient world throughout ancient Egypt's 4,000-year history. All of the ancient Greeks who made a name for themselves in medicine studied in Egypt. The Egyptians also now appear to have developed their own legal system with scribes and judges. Long before the nation of Greece, which was once thought to have been the seat of Western law, was born. What is more, the Egyptians invented the hieroglyphic writing system. They produced the first clock and calendar, and they introduced agricultural science to the ancient world. Above all else, though, Egypt is known for its pyramids, the bulk of which were also constructed during the Golden Age. First, there was the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, built by Imhotep, during the Third Dynasty. This is the oldest large stone structure in the world. Originally, other buildings and courtyards were constructed near the Step Pyramid, and this entire complex was enclosed by a wall 1,500 feet long by 900 feet wide. Today, however, the only prominent remaining structure is the Step Pyramid. King Sneferu of the Fourth Dynasty built the so-called Bent Pyramid several miles south of Saqqara. This structure has no steps, but is straight-sided except for a change of angle in the middle. Finally, there was the Great Pyramid, built for the pharaoh Khufu, whom the Greeks called Cheops, also during the Fourth Dynasty. The Great Pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, is indeed a magnificent monument to contemplate. Still standing today, it originally rose 481 feet and is estimated to have contained 2,300,000 blocks of stone. The area it covers is large enough to hold the cathedrals of Florence, Milan, and St. Peter's in Rome, as well as St. Paul's and Westminster Abbey in London. The Great Pyramid contains enough stone to construct 30 Empire State Buildings. 
If all the stones in the pyramid were sawed into blocks one foot on an edge and then were laid end to end, they would stretch two-thirds of the way around the globe at the equator. There are about 80 pyramids remaining in Egypt and 100 in Nubia, or what is today called the Northern Sudan. Although scientists are not certain of the purpose of these ancient structures, it is widely believed that they served as tombs for members of the Egyptian royal family. We have looked at the black origin of the ancient Egyptians and we've spoken of their major achievements. Now let us turn to the pharaohs who governed this great nation during the Golden Age. There are many rulers of the Third Dynasty, the most prominent of whom was Zoser. During his reign of 19 years, Egypt's borders were extended into the interior of Africa. Copper mines were exploited in the Sinai. Extensive construction took place and the Steppe Pyramid was built. The Fourth Dynasty also brought forth a line of great black pharaohs, some of whose names we have mentioned. Sneferu was a distinguished ruler who successfully defeated the Nubians and Libyans in battle. He also constructed vessels nearly 170 feet long. He was a kind and gentle monarch. His successors were Khufu, during whose reign the Great Pyramid was built, Dedefre, whose pyramid was erected north of Giza at Abu Raj, Khafre, builder of the second Great Pyramid and whose facial likeness is found in the mysterious Sphinx, and Menkari, a just and forthright ruler whose spiritual temperament prompted many to worship him as a god. The first four dynasties of ancient Egypt represented a time of unprecedented splendor and glory. It was the technological high point of the black race. The Old Kingdom is a great pyramid building age. It's an age of great stability in Egypt, um, of great internal um, construction projects. I think that when we look at the Old Kingdom, once again, we're looking at the first um, physicians, what, such as Imhotep, you're looking at the massive construction projects, you're looking at the internal stability. You look in the Sixth Dynasty, when the pyramids were still being constructed at the reign of Pepi II, who reigned for 94 years. Here's a man who he was a young, a boy who was 10 years old when he became the king of Kemet, dies at the age of 104. And that tells us that these people knew a great deal about science, about medicine. The Fifth and Sixth Dynasties still witnessed Egyptian supremacy in the ancient world, but a gradual decline set in that would pick up momentum at the close of the period. The names and personalities of the 5th Dynasty kings remain a mystery because many of them are only known by their statues. Yet it is clear that a number of these rulers were both efficient and adventurous. For example, they formed strong navies that braved the seas and spread Egyptian culture abroad. This has prompted many scholars to ask, during the course of their long history, did the ancient Egyptians sail to the New World before Columbus? Egyptians had sturdy ships that may have made the journey. Numerous apricoid sculptures suggest an ancient black presence in the New World. Even Mexican pyramids, hieroglyphs, and cultural artifacts provide strong evidence that the Egyptians sailed to the Americas in ancient times. It's evident, without going into a lot of scientific and technical detail, that they had already, they knew that the earth was round. They knew that the Earth was tilted on its axis. They knew that the Earth revolved around the sun. They had already, they had already determined, uh, they had already had ways of determining the minute, uh, the length, uh, excuse me, the minute of arc in the heavens of movement of stars. So they had already learned how to determine celestial longitude and terrestrial longitude and latitude. So they would have had more than enough astronomical knowledge to enable them to navigate almost anywhere in the world. And they would have had craft, that is watercraft, seaworthy enough to make those voyages. And I think voyages cross, not only across the Atlantic, but across the Pacific to what we call the New World probably began in, in prehistoric times. And so that uh, America was a cross world, crossroads for the world long before there ever was a Columbus, thousands of years before there ever was a Columbus. And there's nothing inherently impossible in terms of their um, level of science and technology um, and astronomical knowledge that would have prevented the ancient Egyptians from making such voyages. 
the sixth dynasty spanned a period of one hundred and fifty five years.